Hi, my name is Philip Beiter. I'm the curator for performing arts here at the Walker Arts Center. And sitting with me is Sarah Mitchelson, choreographer, director, artist, um, who is uh, just brought to us last night a fantastic work called Devotion, which is um, Sarah's second project with us here at the Walker Arts Center. The work premiered at The Kitchen in New York about a month ago or so. Mm -hmm. and, and last uh, night. Oh, three yeah, weeks? I guess, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's, uh, um, I would like to start by really talking about this newest work of yours um, that, um, that, I, that I'm, I never really had a chance to ask you about what its origins was. What, after Dover Beach, your last piece, mm -hmm. what, how did you start moving on this work? And at what point did you decide to invite or did you connect with Richard Maxwell, the playwright, around his writing some material for you? Well, um, I, the, I suppose the beginning of it was before Dover Beach because Rich approached me, actually. So we, uh, we wrote a bullshit grant where it said that I asked him because he was writing another grant <laughs> that he didn't want to be the lead artist on. <laughs> so uh, he asked me if I would be interested in, um, we have a dispute, he said, um, saying some of his text and I thought he, I remembered it as setting a play to become a narrative ballet huh. with no words. Right. And although I don't think I'm an easy collaborator or I know I'm not an easy collaborator, um, I have a real deep kindred with Rich and his work and I feel like it, there's some very similar base in it mm. that, um, that I'm curious about and that I feel really connected to. And I thought I would be really pissed off if it was a different choreographer got to do it. Uh -huh. So for that <laughs> reason, I said yes. Um, I was surprised that when I heard you were... Yeah, yeah I just thought if, if I see some other, you know, lightly <laughs> culprit, like you lightly usual suspect, talented. yeah, kind of <laughs> um, person do that, I would be, yeah, completely jealous and angry. <laughs> so I thought I'd better do it. And so I said yes. And this, was this something he had written and had uh, in advance of his thinking I'd, about He it? hadn't written it yet. Uh -huh. He wanted it. He wanted. He was interested in the subject of martyrdom, um, is what he uh -huh. told me, and that's all I knew. And then uh, shortly after Dover Beach was done, he uh, asked me if I was going to apply for MAP, and I said yes. And he said, "Well, will you consider applying for the ballet instead? Because I want to play MAP something else." And so right. we concocted it. Uh, Scenario in which I asked him uh -huh, right. to write a text for me. And w w just if I don't, if you don't mind, um, for a second, you talked about w your attraction to Maxwell's work in the past. What was it about his his work that you f that you feel made him a kindred spirit? Well, you know, work? I didn't, I didn't know uh, in the beginning. I thought it was something different than what I know it to be now. Uh -huh. uh, in the beginning, I thought, well, I suppose not. His relationship to the uh, the person on stage yeah. and um, and form, the form, mm. the way that he um, uh, positions his work or his viewpoint in relationship to the form as it exists as a wider field. Right. So, I, so I think I felt like he was angling within the form of theater towards um, some kind of truth, some kind of real direct relationship to truth and and uh, social behavior and, and in that way is very groundbreaking. And I, I, not that I think of myself as, as that, but I felt like I am always trying to understand what it is to make a dance, what is a dance. And so mm. I felt like, and but now I know it to be much, 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 much closer than mm. that. I, know, I now understand from reading his text, which is, that's all, I mean, if you really want to know the story, we skipped right ahead to the last part where I decided I had to read it. But, um, I mean, you, you read it in the house. In the show, the yeah, course, yeah, yeah. So, but, but the story, I'll set, answer this, and then if you really want to know the, the yeah, rest of the story, like I'll go yeah. back and tell you the rest of the story. So, but in figuring out how to read his text, which I figured out very late, in the game of this process that I was, you know, it was within the last four or five months of this process that I realized, oh, I'm going to read the text. Hmm. And even to the very end, it was like, am I going to read it? Is it going to be recorded? Is it going to be silence? Because <laughs> I didn't want to do it. But um, 
I began to understand that the correlation between the solo, Rebecca solo, that happens with the text, yeah. and the way I worked on it, the way I uh, try to um, work with her or a dancer to uh, really have movements exist on their own terms without any um, artifice in a way, like the, the presentate, the what Rebecca had to do to do those movements in the way that she does them and what I had to do to read the words turns out to be a very similar, do nothing, listen, be present, for, you know, all these, all these very similar um, qualities. Right. Huh. So. Going back. Yeah. Um, I didn't articulate that very well, well, but anyway, whatever. So. Because uh, I am curious about this choice of, of your, your reading, yourself reading that text. Right, so that's part, so the, here the it goes. House. So then, so he wrote this grant, he gave me uh, this piece of text. The piece of text was the piece of text I have now. It's changed. Were some. you shocked at all when you first read the text? Yeah, I was like, what am I going to do this? Because it's, it's... I'm like, a, a narrative ballet, there's what? There's no narrative, there's no dialogue, there's no... And, what? It's, and it's biblical. It's, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, oh, well, that I knew was coming. Uh -huh. I knew that was coming, and I'd been thinking about that. But I was like, okay, I'm just, I read it a bunch of times, and I was like, I put it in a drawer, and I was like, okay, that's the text. Meanwhile... The, on the end of Dover Beach, I had done this work with Non right. in Wales, the Welsh girl who's in who's this now show, fourteen years old. Who was nine right? when we started wow. Dover Beach, and for, and with all there were all the four girls in Dover Beach. Non was the one I felt like I couldn't just let her go back. I felt like I had opened up this world to her. Mm. Everyone else was going to be okay, but it would be slightly responsible. I really felt like I have a deep connection with her. I see her, and I did. I felt like she might. I, I felt like I had to do some follow through. Hmm. So I went back at great expense <laughs> to work more with her. To Cardiff? Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. And so therefore it was convenient in a way to bring James in. He hurt his foot. He was supposed to be, ah, oh, whatever. I won't, you know, need all the details. But, um, and I had this text. Jim was there. I was trying to work. There was another dancer on point shoes. It was like, I was trying to work with this ballet thing that I said I was going to do. I've been interested in doing. But most Cunningham had died. And I started explaining to Non that most Cunningham died and who that mm. was. She didn't know who that was. Mm. And I was like, well, you know, the movements are like this. And I started to show the movements. We started to do the movements. And then we started to make that material. And then I started to understand, oh, so this is, I, I, I made this connection right away. Like, oh, it's the new world. It's after the mm. death of. Mm. And um, that was that. I still didn't have any relationship to the text other than that. I was like, okay, somehow none is Mary. I don't know why. <laughs> and so, and then, and she's going to do Cunningham, which in the end she didn't end up doing that. Rebecca really did what mm -hmm. I think it was that. And of course it's not that. But uh, she became post Lucinda and postmodernist and Laura right. Dean and all those people. <laughs> um, so. Blah, blah, blah. We had a couple of residencies. One was in the summer in Mulheim with right. Rich. Under, like the, we had this residency with Rich in the Theatre de Welt Festival right. in Mulheim. I was there last year. And this year? Uh, last summer. Um, I, I, yeah, we were there too. You were, huh? I you went up just for a weekend. No, I didn't. I was there a different weekend. Um, oh, yeah. that's funny. Well, you would have seen the beginning of this then. <laughs> you would have had a lot more answers to your questions. <laughs> so in I Had This Solo, Rich had been working on the, some of the same text with Jim and his daughter, Shauna. And uh, I didn't want to go. Me and Rich had had a falling out, actually. And um, I, didn't, I was not going to go. But then we'd agreed to go and work completely separately, separate, separate the schedule, different times of the day. No one will know this, just in terms of your... Yes, OK. Your I'm, I'm, yes. Separate the schedule. I went in through the back door on the bus. <laughs> I, was, I just didn't want to deal with any of the socializing, nothing. And we had a showing. And um, I'd been using all this different music, really different than what we have now. And during the showing, I, I'd been talking about minimalism and Philip Glass and all this stuff, and Rich was just playing the piano and goes, you mean like this? And I was like, yeah. And I was like, can you, we, but we weren't really getting along. I was like, can you play that for the showing? Like, so I, I'd had all this music for huh. non-solo, which is what we did then. And um, actually, I did what I did in a certain way. I operated the lights and the sound, and I was present, and right. Rich played 
and none had never done it at the piano, but we did it in that way. And after that, I took away all the music completely and I went back to New York and there was only silence and the text. And then it became this really complicated journey towards right. the realization of authorship and the presence of authorship and how important that was and that vulnerability and the presence of rich and what that meant. And there was a lot of different configurations towards that, but that was how my presence and his presence in form of the words had to be part of the structure. That's mm. what I understood in there. There was no going back from that. Mm. And I asked him to direct me, but he would not. I mean, he, it's not really, this is not really, it's probably obvious, a collaboration. Right. He provided text. <laughs> he provided yeah. text. But um, I asked him, I did ask him to direct me. And then there was those things like that Mulheim experience right. was definitely shifting when he played that. So his presence did become part of the work right. in this way that I treasure and um, and changed it. It made me realize a lot of things. It was, mm. And um, then it became, he, yeah, I asked him to direct me and he, he said, all right, I'll come over to your house. And he sat behind me and I read it and he's like, yeah, that's great. <laughs> and I was like, come on. <laughs> and he was like, just take responsibility. He kept telling me to take responsibility. I was like, you huh. can take responsibility. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, and did he come and see the, the show? Yeah, on opening night and he sang, he was like, just right before he's like, <laughs> you know, good luck. I was like, what an asshole. Anyway, uh, well, no, there was one other thing that we, we didn't have the, 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 the text is a prologue and an epilogue and we didn't have the epilogue text and I kept asking him for more text, but he, you know, it was quite a lot of text and he was like, more? He's like, you can't be any of the stuff. I was oh. like, no, no, no. And he was on a plane actually, I think back from oh, the so Midwest. He, he came and he, he added the epilogue much later. Yeah, than, recently, uh, huh. uh, probably uh, two months hmm. or a six weeks before the opening, I kept saying, I need epilogue. And then he's like, okay. I was like, I need it. He goes, he one day he sent me a text, do you need anything? I was like, I keep telling you what I need. And he's like, okay, and he's like, I'm getting on a plane. And when he got off, he sent me that. And that is when you do know he's completely sensitive and brilliant, even though mm. he's complete jerk, <laughs> he'll kill me. <laughs> um, because that epilogue is very amazing, huh. I think. Really, adds, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's It was perfect, so but so yeah, he his instincts are really, from the bits that he knew, his and from what he knew me, the in, his instincts are very good. And I think that the epilogue is probably the true result of the collaboration. Mm. Like by that point, we had... In some ways it was like you guys together. Yeah, then, no, so I really feel that too. Yeah. Um, the title, Devotion, it, it can be read many ways. I mean, obviously the immediate <laughs> religious, um, the sense of, and even gesturally, um, the sense of devo devotion to a higher being, um, the devotion that is clear in the performers of any of your pieces to your vision, but also the devotion, it seems, that people who admire and follow your work have to your work and to, an, any, to the audience who comes. You ask, you ask a certain amount of an audience in your work. Um, were all those things in mind when you, when you created the title? Or? Not the audience. I think very little about the audience. Yeah. Not I, not to be a no, not callous I, way, but a, in a way that I feel like, I, as far as I'm concerned, I'm the audience. That's, do you feel in some ways that issue of audience, is it almost one, or at least you as an artist. As soon as you're the audience, isn't it, it patronizing? You, exactly. Like it, I it, it dis, it's a distraction that doesn't allow you to focus on Yeah, it's what patronizing. You How do I know what someone yeah. wants to see? I have right. no idea. I but, only know what I want to see, and I don't even know that. Yeah, but you have talked about your work um, having a place within um, in a special relationship to uh, the dance, the downtown dance community in New York, and people who have followed your work over time, and, and uh, that there is a, a link there. In some well, I ways. like to hope it is part of a, some kind of critical conversation um, within my peers and my community. I don't know if that's true. I mean, I think I, I think uh, sometimes I think I have alienated that community by being a bit. Um, so many dance movements, so much choreography recently, and, and there's, but, but it's, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Mm. Anyway, but I like to think I'm part of, of a critical conversation that is important to me, or it might just be one I'm having for myself in my head. At this point, I'm not sure. Mm. Um, but devotion is, yeah, I think that we spend our lives and our beings and our money and our um, everything, hours and hours and hours, in the studio 
and yeah, audiences that actually not not literally not the but you know who to this form to this interest and it's um and it's our lives and and it is so to sound hokey it's spiritual i think at this mm. point i i it, it felt not difficult for me to under to see in the this sounds so hokey i'm completely humiliated but in the life of most cunningham or in the life of pina bausch um they're a complete focus on this this um, elusive form and their relationship to it to be continual that they and um, without question I'm sure there are questions but um, and at a certain point in my life I keep realizing oh right I'm 35 oh I'm 40 oh I'm 45 oh I'm 46 <laughs> you know <laughs> and right. here I am and here I'm st I can, you know it's like okay this is what I have done right. with my life this is it and also, this is uh, the box office person at the kitchen, Drew Edwards, yeah. died and having yeah. worked there for 12 years yeah. and he was a dear friend of mine and I having worked there for many years too and his devotion to the form of mm. theatre and his, he's definitely a presence for me also in the making of the, thinking about him and opening the doors again like in Chatham and, and his place there and right. so the, all of those things, the deaths of yeah. the year. Right. And my going for continuing to go forward with prudence and all that stuff, like so, all of that. Yeah. Do you do you find that um, the the connection in this work that some critics have commented on to um, uh, postmodern dance history, uh, Cunningham, Lucinda Childs, Twyla Tharp, um, is is more uh, direct than it has been in past works, and do you see your work as part of a lineage, a, 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 an ongoing, unfolding history of, of dance? Gosh, I would never purport that my work had any kind of weight like that. Um, you know, I think I'm a, I think I'm a dabbler in that way, and that I'm too devoted, but I, I, I don't feel. I mean, but um, Dover Beach. The preceding work, I really worked on um, movement invention, like choreography, um, uh, and I, I, I basically was working on the same subject hmm. from the outside in, and this time I worked from the inside out, or however you want to think about it. In this work, I feel like I worked with known movement or known vocabulary, and uh, so there were tilts and triplets and prances and so, and spins. Yes, the right. vocabulary of those known artists right. who are a major part of postmodern dance history. And um, so that was very present. So in that way, yes, that was a completely referenced. Hmm. Although the Twilight Art reference is the most literal one because of the costumes. But the other things were really from my body memory and, and not it's not like, you right. know, like Looking really like, no, no, yeah, there. it's like yeah. really from my body memory. So the fact that none did show up in this way to, to be like this, like so much like Lucinda, it's quite funny. Yeah. Um, I, of course, talked to her all the time about Lucinda Charles, we did these things, but she's never seen her. I've right. shown her a couple of videos, but we weren't, it was just this, these ideas of what those things are. So, but, but the, I, the, hope was that I could work with Stan and Rebecca Seller with these tilts, these things that I did myself so many years, and curves, and um, two things, uh, bring my life, my choreographic impulses into them from the inside without mm. disturbing them, mm. but um, enter them, those shapes from the inside. And, and therefore um, use them differently, energetically, and um, mm. construct differently with them without, without but, but still be completely honorable about their presence. Right. So that was one thing I was curious about, whether I could do that and whether, what that would mean, or I, I mean, the response to the show has been very positive, but I was sure it was going to be completely me, uh, reamed. It's going to be like, long, boring, I am and, gonna, <laughs> and I'm going to just get killed. But like, how dare she do those movements and da da da? And I, um, and also, um, um, oh, I was going to say two things. I lost it. Do, do, you know, Cunningham always stood for. I mean, it was. 
he would, for his whole career, it was he and Cage, and making this case that dance only needs to be about itself. It mm -hmm. really does not have to be, you know, figurative or reflective of the music. And um, and it's a more radical notion than than I think we often the general public gives it credit for because it is something that requires a different kind of intentionality for both the viewer and I think the performer. But I, I mean, you seem to very much. Be, believe in a similar thing, um, and I wondered about the challenges of them having of then having a text that at times you touched on using figurative, sort of gestural language. But and also other look at the paintings, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. right. No, I think, but there, but I think we really worked on uh, with Rebecca Solo in particular, moving in between, you know, this and you know yeah, that right. those two ideas inside one. One move. and of course, you know, I'm using that. I, it's not chance. I'm yeah. not right. Sure. It's not yeah. chance. Right. At In fact, all. it's uh, well. Um, although, although uh, the 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 text and the solo coexist, those time that does not. It's not set there, in time uh, at all. Any connections we were making oh, off, and, were oh, yeah. in so our that head. in that yeah. way. Yeah. But you know, Cunningham, I think, is I, I don't know one of the f only or rare if the more examples of a, of a choreographer who has such a huge following, whose work is completely abstract. Right. And doesn't bring like kind of um, that, uh, any kind of um, swelling pleasure. Yes. Right. <laughs> you know, it really is, stays dry. Right. It is dry, it is dry. And yeah. um, so it's pretty, you know. Yeah. He's one of the few who I think really exist as a visual artist, exist in the performing. Right. Environment. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was so taken with the design. I always am with your work, but you have such a strong visual sensibility, and you, you're very much involved in the lighting and the scenic design and the costume. You know, just how the whole visual tableau unfolds. And I wondered, was this part of your training, uh, being raised, and did, where did you get this remarkable? visual acuity in terms of your your form of expression um, because there's not many other choreographers who have are able to create a you know a distinct visual world in that I way. actually just think it's like a weird psychological problem I just think I'm a control freak I think <laughs> that I of course I've worked with many great collaborators on the way like Parker who has also incredible sure. visual sensibility and but I think that that but even when I look back at my oldest all the things when I was like I always did something, you know, even from the very right. beginning. And I think, I think it's because I'm just uh, every part of. There's nothing accidental, and every part of what's happening has a, um, um, I don't know, a rhythm, right? So I sort of can't understand how one would make a work. That's me, right? Speaking yeah. without controlling all those elements, right. because. All those elements uh, take up eye space or eye time or textual time or something. Right. So if I'm not in control of those, I don't feel in control, or I don't feel like it is the work. So, so it starts from very grass. So lots of things I know really right away. Like I knew about the orientation of the kitchen and the lighting, uh, you know, within the first few weeks of uh, starting work. And are, so are you developing those ideas um, simultaneously with the choreography? Uh, yeah, and, from know. the very beginning. And yeah. they, some of them, like, the lighting idea came, I mean, almost first, I feel. Uh, yeah. And the lights? The that swing light swing. was the very first idea. I drew that before I did anything else. Uh, and, and are you... Um, y your sense of space in your work, you know, is uniquely sort of created within space, or you, you, ref, you refer to the spaces that you're going to make your work, which of course makes your work hard to travel a lot, around to a lot of places. And um, you were last here with us six years ago. Um, we started talking about that project six eight years, years ago. Oh my God. And you, this is a work called Daylight for Minneapolis. Um, and you did such research, you and Parker meeting with uh, Christine from Herzog and Demeron, and really understood Basel. I never went to Basel. To Basel, to and and you really understood the concepts around this new building, the architectural ideas before 
I think in a way that maybe even some of uh, us here didn't fully. Yeah. And then you incorporated those into a work that you created at PS122 and then brought and embedded here to yeah. the Walker. How was it being back in the space? You know, you, you said to me the other day, you, this was actually comfortable because unlike going to a brand new place where you have to like, you know, embed a work that you didn't, you know, that you have to recreate the spatial sensibility, you already knew this space very yeah, well. Yeah, I had a kind of security. I, I mean, obviously, it was really hairy and it was really difficult, but, right. um, and I, I, you know, it's not the kitchen, so right. it has a very different impact here that I'm not at all comfortable with yet, honestly. Uh, yeah. But I had a, a comfortable, you know, like the fabric on the chairs. I mean, right. <laughs> you know, like that, all those details and the, but I, you know, I, yeah, I feel very comfortable Because you, here. you created your own design work that was related to yeah, some yeah, of the yeah. hair zugs. Yeah, even before the chairs were in here, yeah, I was working right. with that fabric. Yeah. So I feel, um, so yeah, I have this comfort here that is a little bit strange, hmm. um, but, but it's good, I feel. Yeah, it's yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, I think, you know, it made the space last night. It made me very able to be confident. I think what you're really asking yeah. about is how to, it made me from, from a distance be able to be fairly confident about the decisions that I was going to make about how to make the... Uh -huh. The transition yeah. from the kitchen where you really built the work, yeah. which is a very different kind of space than to where a kind of modified black box proscenium space. Yeah, yeah, though. yeah. And, uh, can you talk for a minute about repetition has, has long been an important part of your choreographic vocabulary, but what is the power? I mean, it was, came across so clearly last night. Philip Glass, I know. Mean, well, like, oh my beyond God. Glass. Well, and it's <laughs> funny that you repeated Glass because he repeat, you know, he uses repetition in his then, own work, and then you doubled it yeah, on yeah, top. Yeah. But, so painful, um, isn't it? You're like, oh no, not again. It's, 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 it's though. It's very. Uh, it, you can't. You have to fight against being swept up in it. Yeah, it's yeah, quite no, totally. emotional. No, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, but you're. What is? What can you speak to? Just what do you think the power of using repeated um, gestures? I mean, what what is it that? gives it this tension or something, you know. Well, you know, in Dover Beach, I really strove to not use any repetition at all. Uh -huh. And so I felt very free in this work because, you know, Lucinda and those guys obviously did use a great right. deal of repetition. So right. I was like, phew, I can do it. And I'm not, I'm not being, I'm not uh, showing a lack of rigor on my own part. <laughs> and, but um, I, I think the power of it is that it's the power of eternity. Morning, noon, and night. Morning, noon, and night. Morning, noon, uh. and night. Morning, noon, and night. Morning. I think it's eternity. Huh. And so I think dealing with these issues of God and Adam and Eve and the days right. that are yeah. in the text, I think that morning, noon, and night. Morning, mm. noon, and night. I think I think that that's the power of repetition. Is that that's what we are huh. aware of before and after huh. cyclical rhythm. Did you? It's not why I use it. I yeah. use it because I'm obsessive. Uh -huh. I think. But it builds an interesting. I mean, the way you use it creates a, a dynamic tension that, I think, creates for the active viewer, a, a sense of wanting to see what, what where it's going to go from there. And um, do, do you? When you mentioned about you know morning, noon, and night. Adam and Eve, early. It's also funny, you're part of a downtown community that if ever, you know, biblical themes or religious topics are, you, you know, embraced in a work, it's typically through irony, irony. and mm -hmm. um, co comic or, you know, uh, it's made fun of in some way. What, what uh, I was curious about uh, when you, you know, were looking at the text and dealing with how to deal, deal with it, did it connect to uh, any of your own upbringing um, in a religious way, or did you did you did you find it? Uh, did you have to struggle with how am I going to take on the, these you know this language, uh, this theme? I did, but I said I read it and I was like, what the hell am I going to do with this? I don't know what to do with this. I mean, I know these stories and right. you know, nice writing, rich, good job. Put it in the drawer. I don't know huh. until this thing happened, which happened quite quickly, this, this co kind of coincidental thing I was teaching Non about dance history. And then somehow those two things, just it all went together. But I did not think ever that I was going to use the text. 
Oh, you, I was not, Rich that's right. For a while, we words. were talking, and yeah, you no said words. you might, he didn't might just want set words, it aside. And, and I was thought yeah. I'm going to print a booklet. I don't know, you know, yeah, like right. to please you. I was going to please a print a booklet because that's <laughs> Rich's tag. And I was like, I don't know. But uh, and he didn't want words, and it was going to be no, no, no. And then it just became really, really, really obvious to me that I. I mean, at first, after Mulheim, I thought, okay, I have to teach myself to play the piano. I can't play the piano. So then I was like, but, and I just realized that I can't, I can't do that quickly enough. Right. I was trying to play like, dun, 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 yeah. and then something else on the other hand. Yeah. Like, yeah right. So I was like, <laughs> and so I, and I, but I, then the, I just, anyway. And, and at some point you said, I have to read this text. Yeah. And what, why did you, what was it that said, was your voice, your own personal voice I, I kept saying, can I record it? Can I, and it just was, and I was so painful. I really didn't want to do it every night. I'm just like, fucking hell, I have to do this. <laughs> and um, it became clear that I, there's these paintings of me and Rich. And Which there's I, this work, this devotional work. And if I'm not present, it's spectacle. I mean, I don't know how people see me, and that, that's okay. But to be present as the author and reading, it's whatever anyone thinks, is extremely vulnerable. Um, mm. And I'm also, I'm um, making embedded. myself available to Rich uh -huh. in a way. And, um, available and, to his language and things. Oh. Yeah, and so I'm subjugating myself to his language and and then there are these paintings of right. us in which those ideas are present and um, it became, if, if you have the paintings on the wall and you take me out of the audience, if you take away the triptych, right. yeah. um, the structure of the whole work changes. Huh. And there became no way, no matter how hard I tried, there became, because <laughs> I realized that there was no way out of it. And you also felt it was important to be embedded in the audience. Yeah. Because when I first knew that you were going to be doing the text, I assumed you'd be up at the soundboard in the back of the house yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah. But why was it important to be surrounded by audience members? Uh, two, there's two reasons. One is um, my relationship to the dance is very important. My relationship to Rebecca. Mm. Her going alone onto the stage to do those movements and me saying these words and the fact that the two things are juxtaposed, have a direct line of relationship, I have to really concentrate on her energy and um, it's not, it's not um, accompanying her, that, right. that it's a juxtaposition and in order to really experience that, we have to be fairly close. Mm. And in fact, I'm a little too far away, but that's the only right. way they have power in it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I would like uh. to be another row down. Uh. but. Um, Anyway, and that's, that's that. Being among the people, I mean, the people who know me, I don't know how much you know me, but I, my whole history of being on the stage, I, I've always, I never come out of the dressing room, I never go to the party. Yeah, you do know that, don't you? Yeah. yeah. And, and you um, also don't, you don't have the company ever do bows. No, there's no, and so it seemed like the most vulnerable thing that I could do. And a kind for of anybody generous who knows me, gesture. It's like, ah. here I am, then. Right, right. And, um, so I have to get out of there ASAP at the end, but I'm there. That's I'm not why I on saw the you stage. slip, yeah, slip yeah, yeah. off. Of I'm not on the stage. I'm not separated. I'm right. not that I think I'm so important. It's, it's not that. It's it's the feeling of um, I didn't want to be. The dance is the presentation. I'm not the presentation. Right. In this way, I am. I'm here, and yeah. I'm also going to watch it. Yeah. With y'all. It's kind of like that. Which is also very painful to watch the dance. With people and watch people and a lot. Of, a and good yeah, people are the, watching me watching the dance. And the house lights are. I mean, yeah. you use you use the full lighting yeah. there for a fair amount. And you're cueing things too, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm running I mean, the show. You're running the whole. I'm not calling the light cues, but I'm running the sound. Uh huh. Mixing and running the sound. And why was that? Is that seems like that's complicated. It is. Yeah. I started that in Mulheim, um, and then it became really complicated in the kitchen. I wasn't necessarily going to do that, but actually, the person who's going to run the sound. Uh, had to operate the doors oh, here because huh. it was real doors. Right. And so well, I said, well, I'll run the sound. I've been running it anyway. Um, but they did bring in a sound guy for me to mix. But the um, it's the same reason. It's authorship. It's the presence. It's it's to under. It still is respectable to undermine the idea of this is a, a miraculous theatrical presentation. It's I'm here. I'm doing it. Right. And um, if it fucks up, it's me. Fucked it up. Um, 
You, re you referenced the word spectacle a couple times, and I know sometimes critics have bandied that about. Uh, spectacle uh, in relation to your work. Um, spectacle can also can either be a pejorative word or a, a sort of celebratory, sort of positive thing. H how do you feel like your relation? You, you, your I just work think that I, I I think that I because I make sets and because there's this kind of um, totalitarian visual body experience, whatever. Is like that the, the right word, or is it more a totalism or something? Yeah, maybe, maybe, I don't know. But I think that there's a way in which it sometimes feels um, that, that it's protected by its own outer surface devices, in uh -huh. a way, yeah. yeah. And, um, and of presentation, you know, mm, which right. I'm clever, I can still be open, you still are with the people, it's still like, but but still, um, and I really uh, wanted to open that up, make a change. In, in what sense? I mean, wh you mean with this work? Or, yeah, or, with this oh, work. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. But I was, me I was meaning more just the notion of spectacle. Oh, uh, what do I mean? What do I what mean? I mean, how, what's your, what do you feel about that word used in, in any way about your work or or the wor or just the notion of spectacle in general um, in in live arts. Um. Yeah, I think that I feel negatively about it. Although I think I tend to make spectacle, so it's huh. so I don't. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you've had there's a grandeur, isn't there, to spectacle yeah. that 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 seems to suggest um, an arrogance, perhaps, um, hmm. in the maker, and. I'm guilty. Or it may, it may. I think it's negative sense sometimes is, is thought of as spectacle. It means surface and not depth uh, right. or something, and yeah. that's the opposite of your yeah, work. Yeah, I don't think. I, yeah, I don't think I'm surface, but yeah. I think there is a shiny surface that can be misleading. Uh huh. Because it's also at times seductive, and at times disturbing simultaneously. Like there's something. Is it? Well, it can be, um, <laughs> yeah. it, in, a, in a really yeah, yeah. provocative, interesting way. And I, I know you've heard that about your work before, but, but that's not what you, um, it sounds like there's not necessarily part of an intent, but there's something s slightly alien that you can't quite put your hand on when I'm watching non-dance, for no, instance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a fragility, uh, but there's a fierceness, and it, it's a little disturbing because she's at that in-between age between yeah, yeah, being yeah. a girl and, a, and growing up to be a woman and things. And, um, and I wondered if, if, that's, uh, if, if that was part of your intent. Or, or, I mean, what, non? Or just, the, yeah, that sense, yeah not, well, non, just um, your attraction to her beyond your, your, your care of, about her f and um, she had such an amazing presence in that work. Um, I, all of your performers did, but um, it feels like a, they ha they're different than a lot of performers I see on stage. It's, there's something about the quality of, of the people you choose to be in your work. Yeah, it's very I distinctive. It, ha it feels very like they're very unique individuals. Um, has, that, has that always been the case with your work? And I think so. I think it's different now. I think that when I was working with Michael Parker and Greg, they are, they're what I call, they're the charismatics. Like they, <laughs> they came with that. Right. And I was lucky enough to work with that. In the case of um, Non and James and Rebecca, I feel like I have been very involved in creating that. Mm, right. And, um, and now just working with Jim and Eleanor is a little different. They, they, ha they come with what they come with, but it has been extremely, extremely hard work for huh. both of them. Really huh. like some days it's like crying and like really it's extremely It's not, not hard, hard in a sense of just the physicality, but hard in who they have to be on stage. How they have to, what you have to let go of, hmm. what, your, what your habits are. Like there can be nothing habitual. Right. That's the, the, the unifying factor in this in the work now so is, is that there can be no nothing habitual as soon as things habitual that's where I get ah that's right. and um, and that's that can be a painful process and and you um, everyone most of the people I know who have performed in your work um, are for lack of a better term really devoted 
uh, to your your aesthetic and your vision. Is it a difficult balance between the kind of toughness you have to play as a director and a choreographer and the uh, maintaining allegiance on the part of your people? Yeah, sometimes. I mean, I think, like, it's been, with Rebecca, it's been, she was in Dover Beach and this show, and I, she's the only person I've ever auditioned for, and I took her, and it's been a really long journey. But she, with her, it's actually really great because we're not really friends. Hmm. And um, we don't socialize at all or anything like that. And so that's completely new for me. Everybody else, like, non, hmm. I have, like, involved sure. with her parents, and da 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 and, like, Eleanor. James has supported your yeah, work. Yeah, 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 yeah. But with non, um, I mean, with Rebecca, so that's just a very interesting, I'm curious about that, um, what that means. But no, I think, you know, there's good days and bad days, but I think that generally when people are working with me, if they don't, if it doesn't, you know, if it works out and they're in the process, it doesn't usually go very long if someone's not happy. Right. And uh, either me or the person, and it really is rare that mm. anything, I mean, I can't even, uh, if they're, then the, the thing that people get, dancers get, like someone like Eleanor, I think were you to ask her, it's a director. I mean, I, that someone is watching them. Right. And working in a very detailed way yeah. with them. And I think, you know, I don't know, I think, I am so lucky to be in that position with those incredible people, and there's a, but there's a reciprocal thing. It's that uh, she, I'm, Eleanor, for example, has a desire for that. So then the mm. meeting, so then however hard it is, we're working. It's work. Right. It's just called work. Right. And then you know. Do you? I noticed, and I really admired the level of really fine detail around gesture and f expression and you know, uh, some of the steps, uh, you know, relating to the minimalism of the music, just slight variations. And do you find that your rehearsal process has to be a lot longer than... It's so I mean, boring. It's hours and hours and hours. We spend like five, six hours in the day, in the uh, rehearsal studio every day. Uh, well, six days. Hmm. And this process was like a year and a bit, just over a year, and it was not... I felt like, oh, it's yeah. not long enough. But uh, And you don't have any difficulty with, uh, for instance, Jim... And James, I mean, they're, they're not trained dancers. So. No, we have a lot of difficulty. Yeah. And uh, how do you get how do you get people who haven't who haven't been dancing their whole lives to to be able to move? Like That's that? a slow process. Like Jim is taking him a year, and he's really getting there now. James, too, you know, it's like huh. uh, they have to practice. They don't really like to practice. Hmm. The guys, the actor guys, they, they're like, what? <laughs> but now, but then they realize, like now, they're like, oh, it changed at a certain point. Yeah. Right. Huh. Um, how are you feeling about the work now um, after you opened it in New York? It got great reviews and things like that. You've now taken it to another city. At this stage, um, what do you see the future of it? How are you feeling about what you've created? Uh, oh, I remain completely confused. I, I was completely surprised that it got good reviews. I'm really glad because I really worked so hard and so did everybody involved. Worked so, so, so hard. And so much love went into it from everyone involved. Um, so it was really a relief to get good reviews, but I was not expecting them. And when I saw the show last night, I thought it was really, really rubbish. So I remain completely confused, Philip. Not to take a counter view, but there were moments in the show last night, long stretches, where I um, was uh, felt uh, a complete sense of ecstasy, of like this. So sweet. No, it, it, there's something, some combination of how you constructed the experience that, um, that there was this sense of humanity and the way the dancers were, who they were on stage, that felt like valiant, heroic, like the sense of fragility, but also huma humanity and strength and perseverance that, that really um, felt like it fed the, 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 the viewer in, a, in an amazing way. Um, that's so great. I mean, that's, I intend that. I, guess yeah. I, I just guess I, I missed it last night. Huh. Well, you got to see it a lot of times in, yeah, in New true. York and things. Um, a few just last general questions. One is, what is it outside of the dance world or the art world in general, music, that, that gives you inspiration? 
outside. Yeah, just the things are, in, in life. my life. About, but that ends up feeding your work in some way. I think. Look, I think uh, my life, mm. everything. Yeah. You know, prudence, conversations, um, a lot of time conversations, talking about things, um, traveling, talking, talking, mm. um, reading. Literature, you know, reading, thinking, talking, living, I don't know. Yeah. The working of my own brain, what's that, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. When, when we first got to know each other, I, I felt like that you were, uh, there was a, a fierce struggle um, going on uh, inside, uh, around whether this world of dance and creation of these works in such an underfinanced, funded world and, and without uh, much attention and things really made sense for anybody. Um, but it, it, and he, right now it feels like you're in a different place in some ways that even though the world has not gotten any better, that um, it feels like you, you have a, are comfortable in ma making, continuing to make this work into the future. Is that accurate? Or? Yeah, I think I, I think I, I felt like I, I had a, yeah, what am I gonna do if I don't do this? I guess mm. that's what, it's like, why am I complaining so much? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, it wasn't, I just felt like in a struggle, like how am I gonna live? How am I gonna pay my rent? How am I, I, I don't know how I, you know, I'm getting to be an old woman. How am I going to do But in the end, I'm going to go into the studio. And I'm probably going to do something when I get there. And right. that's, yeah. that's just, I guess that's just what's going to happen. Seems like it. Yeah. Well, it's been a, just a tremendous pleasure to have you back at the Walker and to have this work. We're really proud to have helped um, commission it. And um, we look forward to seeing its success as it travels around. Yeah, and we'll to... see about that. <laughs> <laughs> but Sarah, thank you very Thanks, much. Thanks, Brilliant.